morning, good afternoon, good evening, or whatever it is for you. My name is Zanatsu, and welcome to a deep dive tutorial of Carry Command 2. As you've read on the video title, we are going into a deep dive of the power and damage station. We will be covering how power management works, as well as the damage and repair. In this deep dive, I am going to assume that you understand the basics, you know what screen is what, and how to navigate around them. With all those disclaimers out of the way, let's begin. This is our power and damage station, and I guess field 2, but we don't really do anything besides look at it. Overall, this station is not one that needs any constant management, however, you and your crew should be familiar with it in the event something goes wrong. Let's take a look at a repair monitor. In my scenario, I have taken a massive beating and barely survived. We have various sections of the carrier completely destroyed and our hull is reporting demonic incantations. Because it's 6.66 per... Alright, let's just get this shit fixed up. So, there are a few things to note here. First being that we can only have one station being repaired at a time. Which is admittedly stupid, but this is what we get to deal with. Second, repairing what I will call subsystems is inherently faster than repairing the hull. Third, the hull is the most vital part of your carrier. If hull reaches zero, it is game over, regardless what your subsystems are at. So if we flip the switch on one of our subsystems, they will begin repairing procedures, and every second they receive 1%. So to repair a subsystem to full, you would need to spend 1 minute and 40 seconds. The hull, however, gets 0.02% per second, which means you must spend an awful long time getting it back to full. While I'm covering the rest of this section, I'll just keep the hull on repair. Let's see where we end up at the end. And that's pretty much how repair works. The damage indicator in the middle of the desk is useless, and it's just an LED reflection of the monitor. So now that our repair is going, if we look at our power screen, we notice that there's some power being used. Currently, we are using some power in repairs, weapons, and radar. But before we look more into this, let's head over to the carrier's weapons station for a moment. Due to our carrier being damaged, we can see that it has an effect on our capabilities. Our two front and one rear Sea Whiz guns are damaged, and our torpedoes are damaged as well, as indicated by the flashing red LED. In order for these weapons to come back online, we must repair their appropriate section to 100%. Do note that if any of our torpedo stations are down, it will render the whole system as damaged. Okay, let's go back to our station. There are a few things we can do to help balance our power, but to give you a better demonstration, let's have our carrier go forward. See how the power balance has changed? We can see a few colors that represent the condition of a specific sector's power. Yellow indicates how much supply the station is receiving. Gray indicates the total demand a station wants. Blue indicates that a station is satisfied. Let's try and get some bars blue. Our total demand is currently outweighing our current supply, so we need to redistribute the power by churning off certain sections. Right now, our weapons are useless, so we can churn those off. There are two ways we can go about this. One way is to individually turn the weapons off at the weapon station. Alternatively, we can turn off the whole station at once by turning off the weapon's main supply. Doing either of these has made it to where our power has increased in the other active stations, mostly for our propulsion. Since we need to focus on repairs and not moving the boat, let's reduce the power of our engines. As you can see me lowering the throttle, we can see our power is being redistributed automatically. So we can keep our engines running in such a way where our currently active stations are satisfied. Keeping an eye on your power can help your stations function better. For example, if we were underway with no threats, distributing more power to the propulsion will have our carrier achieve higher speeds. Likewise, if we gave power to our weapons, they can achieve target tracking and locking faster. So, ensuring your power is being sent to the right place when and where it is needed will greatly increase your response to threats and overall make you a better captain. Alrighty, that's pretty much everything. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching this tutorial and I hope I helped you understand the power and damage station a little better. Keep in mind, as the game grows and the devs put in more patches, there may be new information or new ways to use this station not covered in this video. Okay, let's take a look at how far our hull has been prepared. Oh lord, I'm going to be sitting here for a while. Let's turn the engines off and enjoy the waves. <laughs> 